Welcome to the Peace and Possibilities Podcast. This is Julie Bruns, and you are about to be inspired. I am so excited to share my conversations with amazing people from all walks of life who figured out how to be happy, peaceful, and content doing work they love and making the world a better place so that you can see what's possible for your life. I can't wait to hear what you think. Send me an email and let me know one thing you're taking away from this episode. And never forget, anything really is possible. Welcome, everyone. My guest this week is Dr. Elizabeth Cohen. And Elizabeth and I were introduced by Barbara Hewson. And Barbara and I, Elizabeth, I'm not sure if you know, we we were, I've been a fan of her work and reading her books for years. And I had her on my podcast last year. And um, she and I have become, you know, we, we email once in a while. And um, I just, I admire her work so much and her. And I um, reached out to her and said, you know, what other great ladies can you introduce me to um, that want to be on my podcast that love with the work they do? And she's like, oh, I have some, some for you. So you are one of them. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And Barbara Houston is a very special person. So of course she knows more special women. So I'm uh, so happy to be here with you. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. They, they say whenever, you know, I, I know when I was working in, when I was in college years ago, they'd always say like, do, do you, can you introduce some of your friends to this place? And can you get some people to work here? It's like, well, that's the smartest thing to do. Like, if you like the people and you like the work out that go find more people like that. Usually they know more people. So absolutely, um, yes, it's not a surprise. Um, um, okay. So let's so tell everyone what you do and um, how you got to where you are. So I, I don't, I don't know a little bit about your background, but what do you do? Yeah. So I'm a clinical psychologist um, and I've been practicing in New York city in a practice for over 15 years and um, doing traditional psychotherapy. And about four years ago, I was sitting in my office and loved what I do, um, but felt like I was hearing myself say the same things over and over and the same to the same people. And I thought I wanted to have more of an impact. And so I started really thinking about um, how I can share my wisdom, my knowledge, um, with a greater audience. And um, of course, I had to kind of decide I can I'm trained in lots of different psychotherapies. So I had to really decide what area I wanted to work with. And it really came to me um, in a moment of deep clarity. I believe it was on my yoga mat, um, which is where I get a lot of clarity, um, that the thing that I have worked through and healed the most that I can teach people about is going through a divorce um, because I went through a really difficult, challenging time with two very young kids and um, have the most beautiful, full, abundant life I could ever imagine and um, what a joy it would be to help other people get there. Oh, I love that. I love that you turn <clears throat> your problem into a solution for someone else. And they say that that's one of the most, that the easiest ways you can be successful is to take a problem and figure out how to solve it and then teach other people how to solve it. Um, so I love that something good came out of it instead of just, you know, you're talking to, I'm sure you talk to women all the time. They say, you know, they're just complaining and, and, and it's all, just, it's obviously you have to get it off your chest and you have to work through it, but, but that's never the place where you find the solution. And it's never, get, it's never really helpful. Once, once you get it off your chest, it's never really helpful to keep repeating the same story. What are you going to do about it? And how are you going to get through it? And you know, what tools do you have? So that's awesome. Yeah. Did you always, did you always want to be a therapist? Did you always like, did you go to school? Like right out of when you're 17, 18 years old, where you're like, I want to be a therapist. Yeah. So when I was in high school, I thought I wanted to be a math teacher. And then I went to college and took a psychology class and really fell in love with it. Um, and just realized that that was um, such a calling for me. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I think a lot of therapists have this where I was kind of in that role as a kid. I had parents who really needed a lot of support. Mm. Um, so that's another opportunity where coming from something difficult has made me um, move through it and be able to use it and own it myself. Um, and so I think I was kind of trained, um, early on to be a therapist, but then I really fell in love with the theory and, um, the practice of it. And so I just adored it. And I just thought this is what I want to do. And I, I, um, applied to graduate school to get my PhD right after, right. Well, I was a senior in college, but I didn't get in. And so then I worked a couple of years and then I applied again and got in. And so I wasn't going to give up. I knew that's what I wanted to do. Oh, I was going to ask you. So when you didn't get in, were you like, you were, you were smart. You, you said, well, I'll just do something else. And then I'll apply again. Like you weren't, you weren't letting that one little no stop. You're like, no, I'm meant to do this thing. I'll do it later. 
Yeah, it was, it's very, um, the numbers are really against you, especially um, coming right out of college. So I thought I'd give it a try, but I wasn't really expecting to get in because I think it's a lot of graduate schools. And I really appreciate this. I have clients of mine who want to be psychologists, you know, really want people or therapists really want people to have experience, you know, life experience. You know, I was so young, I was 20 years old. I mean, what did I know about becoming a therapist? And so then I got to go and I learned a little bit about research and I want to figure out if I want to do clinical work, working with people, or if I wanted to do research. So I really got a sense of myself more and the field. So I'm I just, I just kept going. It was really so clear that that's what I wanted to do. There was nothing else that I just thought I'd keep trying. Mark, I love the clarity too. And it's hard to have that. I think when you're young, um, yeah. some, some people will know, like, I really want to be, you know, it might be just like more pie in the sky kind of aspiration, but um, I never discourage young people when they say I want to be whatever, but sometimes it's just because they think it's going to be great. It's not necessarily the clarity. It's just like, um, it's more of a fantasy than a than a knowing. Um, so it's 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 um, unique, I think, to have that knowing at a young age. And I love that yeah. it didn't stop you, and that you knew too. Like, because I've been to I've been to young therapists before and thought the same thing. Like, you're you know I'm in my mid thirties or forties, and you seem like a nice person. You probably do know a lot of the theory, but it's hard to relate to someone that hasn't been through any of trials and tribulations yet, or um, have the wisdom. So I can see where that would kind of be a problem. Like you need to gain it and you can't gain it until you are doing it and living life. Yeah. And I think that a lot of the clients I work with now who are going through a divorce, you know, it really does help to disclose that I've been through this. I understand what it's like. It's not, it's a unique experience. So I think you're absolutely right. Having life experience really does help another person feel more comfortable sharing their vulnerable life experiences. For sure. For sure. Uh, so, okay. So, um, <clears throat> When you, so as you were figuring out your journey and um, being a therapist and then go, moving into more of them, the work you're doing now and going through the divorce that you mentioned, all of that along the way, I'm sure you had, I mean, you're raising kids and you're working and all of that. How are you, and knowing that you wanted to do the work you were doing and so clear about it, how did you stay happy and peaceful and content along the way with all of that other stuff going on and, and still having to do good work? Yeah. I mean, the premise, such a good question. I mean, the premise of my work, my divorce work, my clinical work has always been that we can't blame outside issues for our inside problems, that we have to focus on what's going on for us. And I think that I manage the stress perfectly and perfectly of all my life. I mean, when I first got divorced, my daughter was six months old and my son was two and a half. So I was, you know, on my own. And I really had to stop blaming the outside and really turn inward and figure out what, and that means like, what do I need? How can I ask for help? Um, how can I see what my blocks are so that I can have a better life? So I think the way I manage all the stress is really figure out what do I need and what can I ask for? I love that. And I don't think as women, I know as women, we don't, we always have, most of us have a good set of um, set is the wrong word, but a um, little tribe of friends. And even if it's one or two or growing up with siblings or whatever, but we always have usually hopefully um, some good friends. And um, we, we know that they'd be there if we ever asked for anything, but we t typically don't tend to ask for anything because we just think we'll hand, we're supposed to handle it. We'll be there for other people, but, and there are people there for me, but I don't really need anyone there for me. And I don't want to bother anyone, burden anyone. Um, but I always feel like now I know that that's actually taking away some of their joy because they'd probably be happy to help you and help, happy to give you something that you need that they can easily do. Um, and we we rob people of that when we don't ask them for help. And it's a big, big lesson that I've learned in the last probably five or six years. Um, Absolutely. It's a, right? it's, a real, it's a real sense of intimacy to be able to be vulnerable and ask for help and be able to um, reciprocate. You know, I think especially as women, you know, we're so um, taught to be giving and, and doing this outward giving versus receiving, but receiving is something we really need to practice. I mean, people who are listening, just remember, think about the last time someone looked at you and said, you know, thank you so much for helping me out, or I really, really appreciate what you're doing for me. And just pausing and saying, thank you, I hear you. And not just brushing it away or pretending it, it wasn't said. Really receiving is a practice and a muscle I think that we have to work on a lot as women. I, I have a question for you about that. When you 
Yeah, because I agree. You have to say thank you. Like I, we tend to brush it off with like compliments, like, oh no, it's no big deal, whatever, and no problem. Um, but like I said, my new thing is like it was my pleasure, like because I I want you know, because that's it, it's true. But what's another good way for women to do that when when we're, when we're being thanked and not to brush off? Like, what do you tell clients? Just like, like yeah. a one thing I tell clients and I do myself as I say, you're welcome. Because that's interaction. That's a trend, you know, interactional to say, yes, I, it's basically acknowledging I did this and you're welcome. I, I'm, I did it with a full heart. Cause I think when people say no problem, it's just, a, you know, that's a little bit, it makes it seem like it wasn't a problem. Like it probably was. I mean, it wasn't a problem, but I did something. It's like really acknowledging that you showed up. The other fun thing is when someone gives you a compliment um, now I say it's true. So if someone says, Oh, you're so smart. I say, yeah, it's true. Thank you. It's true. I learned that too, from, um, Regina Thomas hour. I went to some of yeah. her performances. It's like, thank you. It's true. Yes. It's like bragging basically, or not even bragging. It's just like you said, acknowledging what you did and, and, and when you know it and someone's acknowledging you for it, it's like, you, you can say, thank you. It's true. Exactly. And not, yeah. And, and we're supporting each other. It feels of, good. It feels yeah. good someone says that because that means you also got it right I mean it feels yeah. like a real connection and again it's about building connection and intimacy rather than pushing someone away because you feel uncomfortable with the the self reflect the reflection from another person of love yes I love that I love that um okay so what advice do you have when when younger women or men or um I don't know how old your kids are now when they ask you for advice or you know searching for a meaningful career or you know, you, you always knew, and then now you're doing it. How do I, how do I know? How do I figure out? What do you tell them? What advice do you give? Yeah, well, I have a, a, a kid who's applying to college. The first thing I say when they ask me for any advice is just to be clear, do you want me to listen or do you want some suggestions? Like I always ask that first because many of us just want to be heard. And in my practice, I can't tell you how many clients I've worked with who say, oh, my, my parents keep reminding me of these things that they think I'm forgetting. Of course, I'm thinking of it. Like most people have already thought of the ideas we could think of. Really what people need mostly is, um, a, you know, a sounding board or a sacred space to be able to express it. So that's the first thing I say. And I believe fully because I have seen people who haven't followed their dreams and their passion and how catastrophic it is that you have like you have to find something that lights you up. I don't think money matters. I mean, I understand that money, you need to consider money. Obviously, it's an essential part of life. But I don't think, you know, I live in New York City. So lots of people will be like, well, I'll work in finance for a couple of years and make some money or work as a lawyer. And I'll say to them, every day that you spend unhappy doing something, no matter how much money you get, adds, you know, takes years away from your life of joy. And so I really say lead with joy, figure out what you just, what lights you up. And I can tell when I'm working with clients, when they talk about it, that they're, how their face lights up. And I think why, one of the reasons I've been so successful in my career is because I love it so much. I've never actually had to worry about it because it just is so joyful for me. I love that. I love what you said about, I was trying to write it down every, every day you spend unhappy is 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 taking years off your life or days days off your life or yeah so, years yeah it's because so also you can't get out of it like we have so many people in new york city that i work with who are corporate lawyers you know they think oh i'll make you know good living after a certain period of time and have no life that's literally what they say mm -hmm. and once the three years are up or whatever it is they've have gotten used to this kind of life of being miserable and it's not easy to get out of it like you mm -hmm. think you're going to but they really can't and it's awful to watch to watch people do that and you're spending every day I believe a lot in neural pathways and how we change the brain and that's what Barbara talks about too I mean you're basically training your brain to be unhappy it doesn't take like 20 minutes to suddenly undo it it's really really impacts your body I love that you are training your brain to be unhappy the longer you stay in it you're training your brain when people like get they get used to it they get comfortable with it and like, okay, well, just, it's like, no, it's not supposed to be that way. And then everything around you is affected in a, in a negative way, the people, your relationships, your, your, your finances, everything. And then you're like, okay, well, this is what it's meant, how it's supposed to be. It's like, no, it's not supposed to be that way. But now you're, now you're thinking it's normal. And this is, I, this is why I do the podcast. It's not normal. You're supposed to be loving what you're doing. You're supposed to be lighting up the world. You're supposed to be, um, finding something you're really passionate about and you want to talk about and do every day. And, and the more people that do that, the better, planet we have the better everything we have um 
yeah, it's just, it's so, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, I'm glad that you're doing that in your therapy when people are probably coming to you and complaining or being stressed out or whatever and saying like, okay, let's, let's look at this really, because you don't have to be doing what you're doing. Some people just say, oh, I'm stuck here now. It's like, no, you're not, especially if you have a law degree, like you're not stuck in that. Exactly. Well, it's, it's interesting because I think our work is very similar because a lot of times people say that about marriages when they're considering getting a divorce, right? Like we've been together for so long or I have these kids, I'm stuck, that word stuck. And yeah. no one is, you know, my, one of my favorite um, metaphors that I use with clients and this really related, I felt this when I was going through my divorce was that you're like standing there and looking at this brick wall and thinking, how the heck am I going to get through this brick wall? Like there's this brick wall. It's so strong. There's no way to get out of it. And somebody, maybe you, me, you know, taps you on the shoulder and you just turn your head to the right and you notice that this isn't a room that you're stuck in. It's just a wall in the middle of a beautiful field. If you just mm. turned your head to the right, you'd see this beautiful tree and a meadow. You're, you were never locked in. Mm. Um, but that's what that's our perception. So we work a lot on perception. Oh, I love that. That's a great metaphor. You're right. It's not it's just right what, what's right in front of you. It's not what was to the side or behind you or around or whatever. Exactly. But you're just staring at that. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that with the students that I um I'm a career coach for. That's a great, great metaphor. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, so is there anything you wish that you learned in your life or career sooner? Any big thing that you're like, Gosh. yes, self-care. I mean, I think that I come to being a therapist very, very naturally. Um, and so I think that, you know, needing to take care of myself and manage my own energy levels, I think I learned that a little late and that everyone is really doing the best they can. Like, that's another thing that, I, that getting into frustration that people aren't moving faster or doing what I think they should be doing, that that's just none of my business, that everybody's doing what they need to be doing. And the truth is, instead of focusing on what other people should be doing, I should really be taking care of myself and doing self-care. So I think those two kind of go together. Ooh, I love that. That's a good way to think of it too. Instead of like some, what's, of course, the self-care is very important, but you're right. You could take that energy that you're spending worrying about someone else or wishing they were doing something different and say, all right, well, you know what? I'm going to do something for different for me, which is going to just make me stronger, better, whatever it is, um, clearer, um, happier, more content. And then that's going to help you relate to the other person or situation better anyway. So why not? Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. I love that one. So, um, so, so after, after talking with, with me and, and thinking about some of the stuff we talked about today, is there anything new that you're taking away from our conversation? Anything that you're, you know, I don't know that that spoke to you today that I said that you said that you're reminded of by some of your work that we've been talking about. Well, I want to thank you, Julie, because I hadn't um, ever really gotten the feedback that um, I didn't give up that when I didn't get into school, you know, something about per persevering is just part of my personality. I think I ha that's a survival skill I learned growing up, but this mo your reflection of it, which I really appreciate really made me um, feel proud that I did that. It really brought to light something I hadn't thought about myself. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I know. I love that too. Like the obvious, you probably just had your head down, like working. It's like, no, you no, I'm, I, I'm the same way though. If someone tells me no, and it's something I really have, believe I can do. I'm like, all right, well that's, that's your no, that's not, that's not officially no. And it's not, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to go tell 10 other people who's that someone said no to me. I'm just going to figure out a way to get the yes or get the next thing I want or whatever. And um, not everyone will do that. Some people will just put their head down and then, all right, well, that's not right for me. What else is it? Yeah. And it's the knowing, like you said, the, the, the very, very clear, um, the very clear message that you got that like, this is what you're supposed to me meant to do. So there is really no stopping you. There is, it's not really, no, so no is what I heard this recently. I've heard it before, but I, again, I heard it recently. No, just means maybe right now it's not yet. No, sometimes means. Yeah, not, not yeah. yet. I love that. Yeah. And really the, ref what I'm reflecting on too, is that um, we can, I can be so um, kind of myopic and not realize that the things about me, and I'm sure all of our clients have this too, like are very, are unique that like, you need to really look at, I think again, as women, we can be so critical um, and not see what is actually a strength of ours. Um, so thanks for helping me see that. Yeah, of course. It was so fun talking to you. I, um, so if people want to, can people work with you? Do you do, um, 
virtual therapy or do you what yeah, your- so, yeah I run a group practice in New York City which we can see people who are not in New York um and that website is um the center for CBT in New York City I can send out you all of that and then my divorce work is dr elizabeth cohen.com that's dr elizabeth cohen.com and there on the website I have a great um webinar on how not to screw up your kids going through a divorce um, and I have a course on there and lots of information, lots of blog posts, oh, awesome. my podcast that I do called the divorce doctor podcast. So people can find all of that. And we'll- Ooh, yeah, I didn't know you had a podcast, the divorce doctor. That's good to know because yeah, I yeah. Know For anyone, or- yeah, it's, it's, I interview, I interviewed Barbara Houston. I interviewed people who've gone through divorce just to hear their positive stories, because I feel like you go to a dinner mm-hmm. party and I hear like people's negative stories yeah. and this is about how people went through the pain, but they also healed. So it's been, it's been really fun to hear positive stories. Oh, I love that. I, I always, I'm so glad you're doing that because what the people that I know that are getting divorced, I, 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 this makes me laugh a little bit. It's sad, but it makes me laugh when people are like, can you believe he, cause you yeah. remember I'm trying to did this. And I'm like now, and I'm like, well, you're getting divorced. <laughs> they, you, you, you're leaving or it's, it's ending because it's not good. So why are you surprised that they're not treating you well now? They weren't, you left because something was wrong. Of course, they're going to keep treating you poorly. Now, now they're even madder. Like it's, it's supposed to be worse. So um, it's just always funny when people are like, can you believe this is happening? It's like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I can. And it seems like it would be normal that that would be happening now. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it, I'm, I'm not surprised by it. And like you said, there's always positive things that come out of it in ways, tools and, and things yeah. you can do to, to move through it in a way that's not, if all, if all you're ever doing is just complaining about it and not trying to fix anything or like recognizing your part in it exactly you know, come around with it then then you're never going to get the positive lessons and you're just going to be more miserable which is what you were when you were in the marriage right like exactly exactly and it is it's a it's a grief process i also I, I have a book called light on the other side of divorce discovering the new you which actually walks you through therapy through healing your divorce and there are layers you know i mean that thing of can you believe it? I hear all the time. And the answer is like, of course I can. But yes. there's a sense that we have been tricking ourselves, those of us who've gone through a divorce for a long time to not see things that we yeah. still have trouble seeing it sometimes. Okay. So the book can really help you move through those different stages. Oh, I love that. I'm going to refer to some friends I know um, that are going through it now. So that's awesome. I, I love that you're, that's the work you're doing instead of not just therapy, but it's like, here's all the other things that can help you. Cause you have to talk about it. And you have to get through it obviously individually, but then there's these other tools, the podcast in the book that are going to help people that are like ready to, to move past it and, and understand it better. If, if you're not going to be talking to someone every week or whatever it is. Totally. That's awesome. Well, thank you for the work you're doing. It was so nice to meet you. And you, um, I'm excited to refer people to your podcast in your book. Me too. I'm excited to tell people about your podcast. Thank you so much. This was really fun. I really oh, thank you so much. Good luck with everything you're doing. And, and thank you. Work. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you loved this episode. Don't forget to like us, subscribe, review, and share it. I hope you were truly inspired. And for a little more inspiration, don't forget to pick up my book, Peace possibilities and perspective, eight secrets to serenity and satisfaction in your life and career. I can't wait to get you love in your life.